Hey, welcome back to the shop, everybody. Um, forgive me if I'm a little off on my presentation. I'm a little rusty at this. It's probably been about six months since I put out a video, and I apologize for that, but life has a way of getting in the way, and I just have priorities. So, hope you understand. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, casting, um, and what I'm going to do is a little bit different than what I've done in the past. Uh, normally when I'm casting, uh, I'm doing it into either a square or rectangular mold to either produce something similar to this, which this is actually a, a blank that I purchased. This is a, an acrylic acetate that I still haven't turned yet because I hate acrylic. Um, but what I've recently gotten into is making custom fountain pens similar to what RJB Woodturner does. Um, they're also known as bespoke pens. Uh, I'm trying to come up with a term more fitting of what they actually are. Uh, I'm kind of sticking with custom crafted right now, but there's just so much more to them. Uh, it, it's a whole different level of pen making. Um, and if it's something you're interested in, I highly recommend taking a class on how to do it. Uh, there are some groups out there that uh, specialize in this, and I can list some information about them below. Uh, so what I'm making are blanks to make custom crafted pens. I've had some limited... <laughs> let's actually tell the truth. I've had some failures in doing these. Um, like I tried to do a blue emerald green mixture and these two are from the same pour. Uh, a lot different color variation between the two and that's not what I'm looking for. What I did on these was I poured all of the colors into one cup and poured them into these sections of Schedule 80 PVC pipe. And it varied depending upon where the colors were in the cup. So I had one that was full, blue, practically full blue, and one that was practically full green with a little bit of white accent. And that kind of consistency just isn't going to cut it. So next I tried doing two colors in a cup and pouring a third color at the same time. And I was actually happy with the results with this. However, it's not a pattern that I want in every pen. It's, it's a very narrow bands of color that are intermixed. So it is a very interesting looking blank. I do like how this works. But I want something with a little more separation between colors. So I tried pouring two separate colors last night and this is what the blank looked like when it came out on the outside it doesn't look all that exciting it's green it's gold yay um, I did make two and I just took one over to the bandsaw and cut it in half and there's a little bit more going on inside however it's still just striations of gold and green somewhat mixed together. Uh, so I'm looking for something a little more towards this end, but with more separation like this. And, and I know I'm nitpicking, but it's what I want, so that's what I'm going to try for. So what I've done is I've made this rod, I don't know if you can see here, I put that down against my shirt, and what I'm going to do is once I pour the colors into PVC is I'll stick this into the pipe, give it a full turn, pull it out. Well, it won't get stuck on the bottom because that'll be closed up. Pull it out and then let that set and see how that turns out. I think that'll give me some of the separation and definition that I'm looking for. So let's get started with prepping the tubes. Okay, so let's start off talking about the PVC pipe first. What I have here are sections of Schedule 80 PVC pipe. 
Why schedule 80? Because of the wall thickness. Um, if you go with a schedule 40 uh, pipe, you're going to end up with a blank that is over three quarters of an inch in diameter. With the schedule 80, your end blank ends up as 0.722 or just under three quarters of an inch blank. And why is that important, you ask? Because making these pens require the use of a uh, collet chuck. And the collet chuck size that I use is three quarters of an inch. So if I'm over that size, it won't fit in the chuck. If I'm under, then I can tighten up the chuck enough to grab hold of the blank and hold it in place. So that's why Schedule 80. It's a little bit more on the expensive side, but not enough to really make your per mold cost that much more expensive. So first thing we have to do is find all of our tools. We use tape. And we're going to use stoner, bleh, stoner Mold Release. This is specifically made for urethane. So what I'm going to do is coat the inside of the pipe. And you definitely want to do this. And I'll explain why here in a minute. You also don't want to overdo it because you could get uh, drips of the mold release on the side and that'll show up in your blank once you pour it. Uh, the reason you want the mold release in there is urethane doesn't contract, oh, I'm getting out of order here. Urethane doesn't uh, really shrink that much. It uh, shrinks about five thousandths of an inch total. And, uh, and, I, and I've done that once before where I didn't put the mold release in. I, I poured the resin in and a couple hours later I went to knock out the, the, mold, the, excuse me, the blank and it wasn't moving. I had to beat on those things for an hour. I had six of them. Uh, it was when I made these. I made six at a time. It was my first time doing it and forgot to use the mold release. It was miserable. So anyway, back to prepping the tubes. After you spray in your mold release, you want to come around to the end that you're going to close off and wipe it down with acetone. And you're getting rid of any excess mold release that has come around and gotten onto the outside of the tube. You're doing that because we're going to be putting on painter's tape to seal up that end. And if there's any of that oil on there from the mold release, this stuff is not going to stick at all. It'll just slide around and be more of a nuisance than anything. You want to make sure this surface here is flat. Uh, otherwise, you can get you know, variations in the end of your blank. And I don't have any examples of that right now because I've cut all those off. Um, it can still happen, though. You could get an air bubble trapped in there. And uh, the pressure in the pressure pot won't be enough to overcome that large of a bubble. But you're going to lose maybe at most an eighth of an inch off of your tube. And also don't think that because this tube is eight and three quarters that you're going to get, or wait, I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you that earlier. The length of this tube is eight inches and three, eight and three quarter inches. Once it's under pressure, since your thing does expand and create bubbles and it pressurizes those bubbles down, you're going to lose anywhere from a quarter to a half inch out of this. So when I start with an eight and three quarters tube, I'm going to end up with an eight and a quarter inch blank. Still big enough to do custom crafted pen, but it's a little on the short side. So we've got this end sealed off.
and we've got that end seal off. So let's go ahead and put those inside our shelf. This is a shelf that uh, RJB Woodturner helped make for me. I went to visit him one day to uh, work on some stuff to help him out and he ended up making me the rack to make my, my uh, blanks. <laughs> uh, you gotta love that guy. So blanks are in place. Next I gotta mix up the resin and put in the mica powder for coloring. Uh, this is something I'm sure you've seen several times, so I'm not going to show you me weighing out resin, mixing in mica, and waiting for 12 minutes for it to get warm enough. We'll skip all that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we are at the correct temperature for both of these. We're at 95 degrees. So it is time to pour. Now, please forgive my sad attempt at them apart from each other. Great. At pouring here, I still have to refine that. So. Take my rod, put that in, give it a full twist. Same thing over here. Probably going to overflow a little bit. That's okay. Full twist. and pull it out. Now, just to account for the shrinkage on the end, I'm going to top it off. And now we can put these under pressure. Okay, so now everything's in the pot. Now it's just a waiting game. I got two hours until these set up and I can pull them out of the mold. And I, depending on how the exterior looks, I may cut one of them in half just to see what it looks like. Eh, I'll probably do it regardless. And uh, then the other one, uh, is based on the results of the interior of that one, hopefully the other one will be good enough that I can use that for a gift pen that I'm making for a friend. So I'll see you in a couple hours. Okay, so it's been a couple hours. The blanks are out of the pot and I've taken one and cut it in half. Not exactly the results I was looking for. As you can see, it's, you know, the, the colors got 
mixed, but it's a little more aggressive than what I was looking for. So it could be that I have too many folds in this, and that's being too aggressive as it turns. Um, I don't know. I may have to play around with this stick some to see what kind of results I get. But uh, as far as making this pen, I'd like to get a you know response from you guys. Which one do you think would make a better pen, a better looking pen? This first one that I made or the second one? I'd like to say welcome to all the new subscribers that have come aboard since July. <laughs> Sorry, it's been so long since I put something out. I, I, I'll try and do better, I promise. Um, I, I'm really glad to have you, everyone, along. Uh, it's you know, shocking. I, I'm almost to 1,200 viewers now, and that's that's just amazing to me. So I hope to be, keep putting out quality content for you. Uh, if there's any kind of project you'd like to see, either pen-wise or blank or hybrids, anything like that, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see, and I'll see what I can do about getting it into the future episodes. You guys have a wonderful day, and I hope that you have a great New Year's. And I'll see you next time here at the Lost River Woodshop.